Hey, welcome back to Midas Letter Live. My guest this segment is a well-known figure from the cannabis space. Cam Batley is the Chief Corporate Office Officer blah, 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 of Aurora Cannabis Corp. Cam, welcome back. Nice to see you again. Cam, let's start with an update. What has been happening? What is about to happen? And can I say with med relief? You can ask me all the questions you like about med relief. Let's see. Okay. Is you, there you a deal won't get any answers. Oh, <laughs> that's great. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, so th thanks for your input. Thanks for coming. Next up, we've got, no, just kidding. Um, okay, so let's so, not talk about med relief. Everything's been said publicly that can be said publicly driving around that. Let's talk about what's new with Aurora. Since we last had you here, you announced the Medicine, medicine Hat. Medicine Hat. Project Aurora. Sun. Sun. Mm -hmm. And Big. we still haven't heard what's going on, or I haven't talked recently about what's going on in Aurora Sky, so mm -hmm. spill. Well, could, let's start with uh, today is earnings day for us, and <laughs> it was another great quarter. It's the third quarter in a row with around 40% quarter over quarter growth. Our annual uh, revenue growth was 211%, so we're killing it, and that's all out of one uh, facility's output, uh, our Aurora Mountain facility north of Calgary. Mm -hmm. Now, Aurora Sky. This is where we're going to change the game, and uh, it is on track, it's on budget. In fact, most of it's been paid for now, oh. uh, and we're anticipating still having our first harvest uh, at the end of June this year. Uh, we've got all of our technology in there from the robotic cranes to really critically important is uh, the overpressure system. Because mm -hmm. remember, it's a closed system. It's really an indoor facility with a glass roof. Right. So we've got our overpressure system in there and the, um, and the air filters. Uh, it's a MERV level 13 uh, filtration level on, uh, in the whole facility and level 14 in the uh, flower rooms. Um, so that's full speed ahead. Um, also in June, we're going to be uh, bringing the first of our, our partner Micron uh, Waste Technologies digesters. Uh, this is a digester for organic waste. We're going to be moving that to our mountain facility uh, and we're going to be starting to optimize that for cannabis. Uh, our other partners uh, from Radiant Technology to Hempco to Can Group in Australia are all doing well and these have been great investments uh, of uh, shareholder uh, money because they've all appreciated significantly in value. Mm -hmm. So this is going to be the year where where we go from being the fastest growing uh, company in the cannabis sector over the last couple of years to the company that really defines the, the future of the industry. Uh, because our uh, Sky class facilities, that's uh, the facilities like Aurora Sky, like Aurora Sun, like Aurora Nordic, uh, the million square foot facility uh, in Denmark, and like the uh, TGA, the Green Organic Dutchman facility we're building for them in Valleyfield, Quebec. Uh, these things really are 21st century production and we're the first ones to define that. Uh, so remember, we acquired a company called Larson uh, Limited. Mm -hmm. and I met Tom Larson. It, and Thomas is the best in the world at what he does. He, right. he designs advanced greenhouses. Mm -hmm. And um, so he's now heading Aurora Larson Projects, right. which has turned out to be a revenue generator for us. Uh, it's turned out to be a, a great a way to open doors. This is how we found our partner in Denmark. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and he's now designing and building and overseeing construction of about 15 facilities around the world. So all of this is happening incredibly quickly. Oh, and by the way, last week we completely closed the acquisition of Canamed, right. uh, and that integration is going remarkably well. We know they delisted because it screwed up our index for the last couple of days. <laughs> exactly. and we're like, why is the index screwed up? Oh, Canamed's been delisted finally. Well, mm -hmm. that's that's great. So you guys are moving very quickly now. Uh, going back to to what you were saying, how much how much is what is the first crop out of Aurora Sky look like in terms of size? Uh, it'll be smaller than, than the full uh, capacity of the facility. We think that we'll be at full capacity, which will be in excess of 8,000 kilograms per month. Uh, aggressively, December, uh, conservatively, uh, more likely I would say January or February. Uh, and that's, that's when we'll be at full capacity at that facility. Um, so we're going to be ramping up over the course of 2018 and just adding capacity uh, month by month. And let's not forget that we also, uh, we've had our first three harvests out of our Aurora V facility on the island of Montreal. So that will, uh, as soon as we have our sales license, add immediately at another 4,000 kilograms per year. So multiple facilities, multiple jurisdictions. Uh, we're doing amazing uh, stuff in Germany. We, we're selling 100 kilo, uh, kilograms a, a month uh, through our distributor, Padanios, in right. Berlin. Uh, and the, uh, the demand in the German market is absolutely unquench uh, unquenchable. And also in neighboring Italy, we've sold 
our first product in Italy as well through Padanios. Great. So Europe is where uh, we're uh, focusing a lot of our attention. At the same time, we're getting ready for consumer legalization. We're preparing all our brand plans because uh, we are going to have a very strong, very admired brand in Canada as well. So three market segments, Canadian medical patients, uh, Canadian consumer, international medical, and of course, you know, people are coming to us about the opportunities to uh, uh, to be acquired. Uh, that's the interesting thing is that they're coming to us. We're, we're So MedRelief came to you and asked you to acquire them. Uh, let's just say that we've spoken with everybody in the sector. We've spoken with everybody in the sector and there's a lot of speculation, a lot of rumors going around. And, mm. and I actually, I want to caution people not to trade on these rumors because we saw in the Canamed experience that there were uh, small investors that got hurt uh, trading on news that was uh, reported by reputable sources that turned out not to be true. Sure. It was based on rumor. Uh, so people need to be very, very careful. And more broadly, uh, those of us operating in this industry, we need to grow up ourselves. We need to operate professionally. Uh, we can't be having this kind of stuff going on. We need to think about those investors getting hurt, and that's not right. Right. Okay. Um, I have to ask, because I've been asking all of the ACMPR growers this, and in, in the interest of credibility, I do have to ask the odd sure. question. Um, you, your cost of sales relative to your reported rev revenue, did, was the Our cost of sales was up a little bit. Uh, was up? Yeah, it was up uh, just a little bit. Okay, um, but was your cost of sales negative? Our cost of sales, oh, uh, you mean because of the, the biological assets. Right. So this has been, it's funny, I, I talk about this with our CFO, Glenn Imbet, who's amazing all the time. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's something that, that makes zero sense in this industry. Uh, the, the accounting rule under IFRS, where mm -hmm. we're required to report the fair value of our biological assets. Right. But you can actually end up with your, uh, your gross profits being higher than your revenues, mm -hmm. which makes no sense. And that's why good CFOs like Glenn, they add a lot more information. So Glenn breaks out, uh, for example, sales of, of uh, cannabis, uh, um, dried cannabis versus oils, sales in Canada versus Europe. Uh, he breaks it down in other, wa in other ways. In fact, he actually puts in grams per, uh, produced. And I think we're the only ones who actually report our grams produced. Mm -hmm. So that you can accurately and fairly and transparently track our, our performance, whether it's good, bad, or indifferent. Wow. That's one of the better answers I've had. So uh, Good. Great. So then... Um, in terms of patient growth, yeah. how has that been? How has that been inclining over time? Uh, well, it's it's a little bit misleading in our most recent quarter because although we only had a couple of weeks of Canamed uh, to consolidate, we actually did include their patient numbers. So right now, Aurora's patient numbers are, I think, in excess of forty-five thousand. I should em emphasize this though, we're de-emphasizing that as a metric. It was really important because we lacked other metrics over the last, uh, over the, f the early years of the ACMPR mm -hmm. and the MMPR. Um, these days, uh, especially with European sales coming online, uh, the Canadian patient numbers is becoming a less valuable metric. Uh, for example, um, we're, we're selling you know, anywhere from uh, 20 to 25 percent of our revenues now are, are, are being generated in uh, Europe. And we don't know exactly how many patients uh, there are because it's a different system that goes through pharmacies, uh, pharmacies in mm -hmm. both uh, Germany and in Italy. Um, so I think that that metric itself will become less useful, useful over time. But it's a big number sure. to start with. Sure. In your view, what is the most important metric to measure cannabis companies by as an investor? By next year, it's got to be the fundamentals. So just so the balance sheet. Yeah. Right. So are you going to ask me about profitability? Uh, well, <laughs> I, was, I, was, I was going to ask about profitability, but since you've introduced the, the concept, go tell me, tell me about the profitability and the, and the earnings per share that you reported. So um, we're not profitable yet. Uh, we know that we've been in a powerful growth phase, not just in Canada, but around the world. But we've gotten to the point now where, where we've got good cash flow projections. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, with you know, subject to the usual caveats about the possibility of an asteroid hitting the Earth, I think that we're going to be profitable by the end of 2018. Hmm. Calendar 2018. Okay, that, well, yeah. that will be uh, that'll be a feather in your cap. Now, I've been seeing more and more uh, PowerPoints, for want of a better explanation, of companies that are you know proposing to grow huge, huge acreages of of, of hemp and, and and lesser grade THC mm -hmm. uh, products, suggesting that the don't don't tell don't tell Vic. Newfeld <laughs> that that his greenhouse grown product is lesser grade. Well, it will hurt his feelings, and I like Vic. He's a friend. Boy, oh boy! At least that response. I know I'm going to have Vic back in the chair soon enough. You'll have him tomorrow, <laughs> and I'll be <laughs> watching because I like Vic. Probably. Um, you know, I've been messing with the idea of getting Aurora Canopy and Afria on this in this environment to have a conversation. Well, why leave out Med Relief? 
Well, med relief, uh, well, I'm sure actually Neil wouldn't have a problem with that. I Neil's guess. awesome too. Yes, he is. He and I have been on the board of Cannabis Canada together for yeah, a couple years. Actually, there's, well, there's always a discussion about which companies I should invite, which ones I shouldn't. It's, it, there's about six, I guess, that are sort of all above a billion dollars at this point, and probably that would be the best case. But for yeah. now, um, so there's no plan on Aurora's part to decrease the cost of production of raw material input into extract-based products by externalizing growth in a low uh, product quality environment. I see where you're coming from. We actually don't have to do that. Um, we don't have to make a choice between quality uh, and, and scale hmm. uh, or, or price. Um, in fact, that's, that's why we chose the design, uh, the facility design that we did, th this sky class design, um, because it's a closed system, because it has a glass roof, because it makes use of the sun. We get to do all three of the, uh, the things that we wanted to do without compromise. So massive scale, uh, extremely high quality product, and that's important to us because mm -hmm. we're going to be serving everybody uh, right up to the, the connoisseurs who really care about the, the quality of, uh, of the, the bud hmm. uh, and the terpene profile. They're like wine connoisseurs. Right. Uh, and we're not going to give up our reputation for high quality. So massive scale, high quality of product, and ultra low cost of production. So right now, I guess you'd say among the large players, uh, Afria is the cost leader, uh, but we think that we can actually get below uh, their benchmark uh, at our uh, new facilities, these hybrid greenhouses. Uh, and that is very, very specifically the point. We think that we're going to get well below a dollar per gram in our production costs. Sure. Your European strategy is a matter of the public record at this point. Yeah. What's the U.S. strategy for Aurora? It's it's a few things. One, um, we are intensely um, observing uh, that market, mm -hmm. and we're identifying uh, what technologies are are really great there. Uh, because whereas Canada is still uh, the leader, and and I think will be for quite some time in terms of overall scale of production and, and certainly market cap, access to capital, and the ability to expand around the world. Um, in the U.S., there are so many companies operating in the space, and there's some really cool technologies um, with respect to, well, ancillary processes uh, and formulations and so on. Um, so we're watching that very, very carefully. As soon as we can find a way, legally, and without ticking off uh, the TSX, um, then we will move into the U.S. market. And that probably means some uh, regulatory changes in the U.S., but maybe not. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to make sure that we find our way into the U.S. market as early as possible. It's almost like we're poised on the border just waiting to get in. Right. There's tremendous opportunities there. Okay. Um, we've well exceeded the attention span of the average internet viewer, so <laughs> we're going we're gonna to leave it there, Cam. Much as I'd like to talk to you all day long and ask you all kinds of questions and trick you into, try to trick you into giving me inside information. I don't want to go to jail, man. <laughs> no, neither do I. We'll leave it there, and thanks so much for coming in today. Appreciate Thank you, it. James.